it is time for a techo kaigi, aka a mid-year planner, notebook, and journal check-in to see what was really helpful, really productive, and mainly my goal is to show you how I use all of these items to help you save some time, money, and energy. Because if you follow my YouTube channel, you probably have like a similar planning style and notebook style and journal style like I do. And you might be looking for some tips or tops to increase your productivity, make sure that your planner, notebook, and journal stacks really work for you. So we're going for productive, effective, and efficient. So I will show you what I've been using and what hasn't been working so well and what has been working well so you can hopefully make better decisions and buy things that really help you in your daily life because that's what we do here at My True Life. We try to create lives that we really like instead of following the masses. And I use my journals, my notebooks, and my planners to make sure that I keep listening to myself and do what makes me happy instead of doing what society tells me to do or friends or family. So that is what My True Life is about. Welcome to the channel. Let's dive in this Techo Kaigi. I think it's best to start with the planners, notebooks, and journals that I use every day. And therefore, we have to start at my Hobonichi Weeks. I will give you some pros and some cons. So first up, as you can see, this is an iPhone. It's an old one. I think this is like a 13. Um, but as you can see, this planner is quite cute and small. Um, I have a cover on cover it, on it, which makes it look quite cute, but not too cutesy. Um, I'm a business owner, so I sometimes have to go to clients instead of working at home. And then I like to have my little planner with me so that I can check what the um, appointments were. I can write new appointments down, but also look professional yet have some fun with my planner. So if you're looking for cutesy planner layouts and that are really pretty and nice, um, this is not the channel. <laughs> I am. Um, I love the idea of being able to decorate prettily, prettily, prettily. That is not a word. I I love the idea of making pretty spreads. But honestly, in my Hobonichi weeks, this is just like getting shit done. You know, I'm not busy with um, cute stuff. I mean, I try. I have a sticker here and there, but at the end of the day, this is the heart of my operation, if you will. I use this journal to get shit done, and that's exactly what it looks like. So. You guys may have seen this already, but in the front, I have my steps tracker. Then you have the monthly overviews, which I use to keep track of my income because I'm a business owner. If I don't make money, I, um, you know, don't get paid. So I do keep track of what uh, money I make to motivate myself and keep going. Although I have to say I haven't been <laughs> doing that very well because I was tired and mentally a little drained. So some of the things that I implemented at the beginning of the year, I have not followed through, including tracking my income here, but I have been tracking it digitally, but that is a story for another time. Then after a month leads, you get into your weeklies. So Monday to Sunday, and then I have my appointments here. I have some themes and note boxes here. Like for example, on July 5th, my brother's birthday um, occurred. That sounded weird, but my brother had his birthday on the 5th of July, so cute little sticker. Um, I went out to dinner with my sister, so we had ramen, and I also did my taxes. So I do sometimes try to make it look cute, but like a little sticker. And then here I track my weight, my workouts, and the kilometers I walked, and then I have some trackers for my health and um, mental health, home care, food, fasting, and learning Korean. So in the back, we have one more thing to check, and that is my period tracker, because I track my intermittent fasting and my cycle together to make sure that those two are not clashing. This uh, cycle slash intermittent fasting tracker, love it. It has been very beneficial in order to learn how my body works and what I shouldn't be doing. I also love these weekly spreads that I created, and I will say that there's a one thing I don't like about the Hobonichi Weeks, and some people will probably say, girl, you can do that in the back with your uh, extra note pages, 
because what I don't like is that when I put my trackers here, there's no space left for jotting down tasks, aka the bullet journal system that Ryder Carroll designed, which I really, really like, uh, but I don't like doing that in the back. Be I don't know why, but it just, I don't like it. So then we go to item two, which is my plain Hobonichi Techo um, notebook, which I've been using as a bullet journal. And I adjusted the bullet journal system by Ryder Carroll to fit my needs. So I used to make the cute little, you know, monthly cover, the monthly overview. I would have a task dump and then I would get right into the tasks. Now I gotta tell ya, um, I like my color system. I explained it in my bullet journal video. So if you wanna see that, how I use this, go for it. It's very simple. Basically I use a green marker to mark what is done. Yellow is going to go to the next day. Um, blue is important as in you really want to do that, but it's not due right now. And then we have some red, like for example, meal bookkeeper for Texas. That is like a get shit done like right now type of deal. So that's how I color code things and I don't use the arrows and stuff. Um, it's a very rare occasion that I use the symbols that Ryder Carroll does. But um, yeah, so I added this bullet journal to my Hobonichi weeks because I can't do the bullet drilling in here because I have no space left. So I was like, okay, let me add a plain Hobonichi notebook. And then I started off really cutesy with all the, you know, cover pages, but then life started happening and it's just page after page after page after page, not decorating, but just getting shit done. And I gotta tell ya, I love it. <laughs> I love how simple a bullet journal can be with my color coding system. And if you are just like me, if you have a lot of tasks and a lot of information that comes to you and or comes at you on a daily basis, I think um, adding a bullet journal like this is definitely a good idea, especially when you work with a smaller planner for your appointments and maybe some small trackers, then you're definitely going to love having a designated space for all of your tasks. Now I will say that I have started to get a little annoyed by the system because on the daily, I have at least three items on my desk including my personal journal, because otherwise I forget the journal. So I always have like a stack of these three on my desk and it's a pretty heavy duty setup and I wanna downsize. I've been noticing that my brain is looking for things that are simple because I wanna save time and relax more. I am really craving more chill time so I can make videos like this. For me, this is chill time. I can talk about stuff I love. And if I have all of these notebooks to keep track of, it is taking my time from doing what I actually love. To me, that is counterintuitive and counterproductive. It's, I feel like using journals and planners and notebooks should make your life easier and save you time instead of adding more time and more stress. So what I've decided, I'm well, I'm still a little on the fence, but I think I'm gonna change my Hobonichi Weeks and my plain Hobonichi notebook into a Hobonichi Han A5 uh, size because that one has point one, more space. Point two, it has those weekly um, vertical um, overviews with time slots, which I like. I like working with time. I also do that in my Google calendar and it has dailies with more space also for tasks. So it's like, if I can get everything in one book, that will make me very happy. There's just one thing that will probably be annoying to me. And that's that I won't have any place for my weekly trackers. Cause I really do enjoy these weekly trackers. As you can see, you've seen these in all of my videos. I love these weekly trackers so much. They've really helped me um, be better at self-care. And I'm not just talking about lighting a candle, but just like skincare, taking a shower, not forgetting to journal for my mental health, um, making sure I do the dishes every day, fasting, learning Korean. Those are all things that help me with my health, uh, my mental health. And so I don't wanna lose this 
but I also find it annoying that I'm working in two books. And for the longest time, this was fine. I've done this for about two years. And now I notice my brain is craving something else. So by the end of the year, when the new Hobonichis are getting released, I am definitely going for a Han, seeing if that works. If it doesn't, I'll just go back to this. But I do really want to explore that. So if you're a very minimalistic planner like me, and you have a lot of tasks that you have to finish on the daily, I definitely think this setup could make you happy. Just a simple Hobonichi Weeks for all your appointments, maybe some trackers um, and some cutesy stuff. And then you have a designated space for all your tasks so you can't get distracted by like cute stickers and stuff. This is just like getting shit done, getting shit done. See green, 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 green. Green is good. It means I've got a lot of stuff done. So this is very um, helpful if you're the type of person that needs affirmation of how many good things you did in a day. The green is good in my mind, so you can use any other coding system you like. But for me, seeing all of this green, I'm like, yeah, girl, you were so productive. Get it, get it, get it. So yeah, um, I want to give this system, I think a nine out of 10, because nothing is really perfect. But yeah, this is something in my Tachokagi, AKA my overview um, that I really love. And for all the minimalistic people that like to get really productive this might be a really good system so you don't have to do anything i say just think about it maybe it's helpful for you now we're talking about daily things that i use on the daily and then i definitely have to show you my personal journal this is my personal journal it is a lurturm in 120 grams and i started it off like everyone seems to start off on youtube cute cover page. I did all the things, the overviews, as you can see, I didn't even use it. Um, and goal pages and um, cover pages. And I honestly, I started this journal in 2023. So this has been with me for a while because we're now in July, 2024. Um, and I haven't been journaling every day. This is my personal journal. And for people wondering what I mean with my personal journal, this is the journal where I write down everything I'm feeling, experiencing, things like, oh my god, I hated fucking traffic today, or that lady is a bitch, or oh my god, I'm so happy I met this really nice person. Like, everything is in here. But I will say that making all of these spreads are just not effective for me. So if you like making these spreads in your personal journal because you actually use them, go for it. But for me, it has proven to just be a waste of paper. It was something fun to do, but I'd rather have my journal be efficient and effective. Uh, it doesn't have to be productive as in getting a lot of stuff done because journaling is, for me, like I said, it's all about my true life. Figuring out how I'm feeling, what I want to do with that, what do I want to achieve in life? It's all in here. Um, and as you can see, I have this page, which I do really love. It's my everything good page or my one good thing a day page. I write one good thing per day down because my brain needs it. I need to train my brain into being positive. So that's why I have this page. As you can see, I haven't really been doing that in this journal. That is more a thing related to depression. I have had some very depressed months in 2023 and 2024. And so my journal started feeling really heavy because I was writing down all the things that were bothering me. And I wasn't journaling as regularly, annoying word, as I usually did. Um, but I did journal a lot since 2023. I only have like a few pages left as you can see. Um, but my personal journal is, yeah, it is kind of my heart, my mind, my brain on paper. And I love this personal journal because paper and the pen, they don't argue with you. I can write down anything I like and I won't get unsolicited advice or stupid opinions. It's just me and the paper. I can read back what I wrote and it has helped me to break patterns ways of thinking. It has helped me nuance my opinions and understand myself and others better. So this is really one of my holy grails. And I will say, if you can find a personal journal that you like, go for it. It is 
the cheapest therapy you'll ever have. <laughs> um, I will say that because I had a few very depressing times, um, this journal has started feeling like heavy. Literally, it feels heavy. It is a heavy notebook because it's a Leuchtturm 120 grams in a Hobonichi A5 cover. So that's just like heavy material on its own. But like feeling wise, it also feels heavy because I've been pouring my heart out on the page. And so for a while, my personal journal has felt um, like something I didn't want to open because I knew it was going to be filled with things that made me cry. <laughs> and I'm not a crier. So if I cry, I'm literally at rock bottom and I don't know what to do anymore. And that's what my journal was feeling like. So do I love having a personal journal? Yes. Do I recommend it? Heck yeah. Um, but I do notice that I've made some changes. For example, I don't make these um, pages anymore, like these cover pages. You know, I don't do that anymore because it takes too much time. And um, I, yeah, I can't show you what I wrote in here because it's just really personal, except for this page is where I explain this tarot card. Um, so yeah, uh, sometimes I like to decorate, make it look pretty to reflect my mood. Um, but most of my pages after this one have just been text, 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 no cutesy stickers, nothing. Um, and I highly recommend that you treat your journal exactly the way you want, because this is your brain on paper, your heart on paper, your feelings on paper, and whatever you want to do with it, there's no right, there's no wrong, whatever you want to do with it, if it works for you, go for it. Highly recommend a personal daily journal, and you don't even have to do it daily. Sometimes I don't touch this thing for months. But my point was that because this journal has been starting to feel really heavy, I recently bought a new Hobonichi Weeks. This is an April start and therefore it was on sale and therefore I was like, I always wanted this cover, but um, it was sold out for the January start. That's why I have this purple one because this was one of the few ones left for the January start. But actually this was my first choice for the start of the year. Anyway, I got this because I saw a lot of people journaling in their Hobonichi weeks and I was like what a waste you can do that in your personal journal you can put it all in there but then I realized I need a designated space for happy thoughts because this one has been feeling so heavy and sad I need something that makes me feel good so um, I started with one good day or one good thing a day in a new Hobonichi weeks um, so yeah every day I write something down that was positive um, we're now in July. I forgot what I did on Tuesday and Thursday. I'm filming on Sunday, so I still have to fill this in. But yeah, um, I feel like this could be like a cute addition to my daily planner, journal, and notebook set. Um, because I do really think this is important to write down good things. Even if it's just something simple like I called my mom or I finally texted back that friend or... Uh, I did the dishes or I got out of bed on time, like stupid stuff like that. Anything that makes you feel proud or happy about the day, write it down. And the thing is why I also like this Hobonichi Weeks thing for one good thing a day is that it's pre-printed. I don't have to like draw all the things. I just write it down, stick a sticker down, call it a day, and then I can feel better. And then this journal is just going to be for writing and pouring my heart out. And this will be the journal that I can look back on when I feel a little sad and be like, oh my God, look at how good my life actually is. Right? Like it's like a little reminder of all the good stuff. So yeah, this is new. I just started this yesterday on July 6th, 2024. I can't say if I will keep this up. It's an experiment, but I just wanted to show you that you could have a personal journal for all of your I don't know, heavy stuff. And then maybe like a designated place where you can write down all the happy stuff because yeah, I don't know. I think Serica, she's on YouTube as well. She said something similar like I did. And she said it way better than I'm trying to say right now, but she said she needed a place where she could write down all the good stuff so that it couldn't be diluted by the things that were bothering her, which she was writing down in her journal. I was like, girl, I got you. I get that. And hence this weekly um, uh, planner, 
which I can also do with you guys because this doesn't have all the heavy stuff and I can just daily journal with you guys. And I do look forward to that because it makes me happy. And I can also just be more cutesy in here, like put stickers down and um, pictures and stuff, which I don't do in my Hobonichi weeks for work and business. So yeah, this is new, but I still wanted to share with you if you're a journaler like me. So we can put these to the side and go over to things that I rarely use or less use less, but I do like. So this is not really a journal or a planner, but it is a notebook and I use it for learning Korean. I, <laughs> I haven't been using this daily and that's more to do with work. I've been working a lot and my mind has been full. At the end of the day, my energy is down and... I've been learning online with doing online quizzes and tutorial videos, but what I need to do more is write because when I write things, I remember them way better and I tend to understand things when I write them out. But I still wanted to show you because I definitely have to use this more, <laughs> but I do really like Stalogy paper. I hope that you can see how the pen behaves on paper, I will say. For example, this was with um, fountain pen ink. I don't really like fountain pen ink on um, this stylogy. Can you see that? Why am I being so stupid? Hello, all right, here. I don't like this fountain pen ink, but maybe I just didn't use the right one. But I do like using Sarasa um, gel pens on here. They look absolutely great on this paper. This is a Muji pen, by the way. It looks fantastic. I love how smooth the paper is. It writes amazing. So if you're looking for a journal, uh, sorry, looking for a notebook, it, which you can write to learn things, I highly recommend. It also has like a grit. I have a very small handwriting style, as you can see, and the grit is a, a little bit bigger, which is nice because if you write Korean, you're using Hangul and the characters are a little bigger and they fit in these, um, grits perfectly and hangul is usually written in like sets of three or two to four characters and they fit in these boxes of the grid perfectly and my mind loves a tetris kind of situation where everything fits um so yeah that's why i like this notebook for learning very very well i imagine if you do like mathematics stuff and you need to draw like um, what's it called? Um, you know, those, those figures that a grid paper would be very nice as well. So this is something I want to use daily, but I haven't been using it daily, but there has been a time where I did. And so I do really like this notebook. Just wanted to share with you, um, if you like learning things and also you can use this for journaling if you want, but I think the paper is a tad too thin for me to journal on especially if I want to add stickers and pictures and stuff, then I prefer thicker paper, like 120 grams paper, which is why I have a Lurturm 120 grams for my personal journal. And this is for learning. So next up, something I don't use that much, but I really, really love is this Traveler's Journal. This is the passport size. It is a limited edition. I'm so happy I got my hands on it. I actually bought a regular sized because it was on sale, which rarely happens, but it isn't in yet. So I'll show you that when I get it. I will have a haul video for you. But this one, I've only used once, but I just booked another vacation to Rhodos, uh, which is in Greece. It's a cute island. I'm going with my sister, but I'm also gonna do some work there and vacationing, hence, Workation. Um, and I actually use this traveler's journal for travel journaling. So when I go on a trip, I don't bring this big personal journal with me because I mean, look at the flipping size. It's really big, it's really heavy. And if you compare it to this cute little passport size, way better in your hand baggage or hand luggage. So that's why I bought this, especially for traveling. Um, this is my, my, this is going to be my second travel in a year and a half. I'm not like a regular schmegler traveler. Um, yeah, my parents were not really travel people. We used to go to the South of France when we were kids in a caravan. But now that I'm like 
35, I finally get to go on the vacays that I like to go on. So we're going to a five-star hotel, inclusive, adults only, no crying kids, no annoying families, just people that want to relax. And so um, I will write there. We're going to go to Ro yeah, Rodos, Rodos, cute little island. They have cute little cities there. So I can't wait to make like little entries like this. And so, yeah, this is something I don't use daily, but I do definitely use regularly when I go on a trip because all I bring is this and then my Hobonichi Weeks Planner for work and business. And then this is my setup. This is what I bring on a travel. It's very simple, very minimalistic, but that is why you're here. So I do highly recommend a little travel journal like this. The reason I went for the Travel Journalers Company version is because you can take out the inserts. There's like little craft folders for receipts and stuff. So this is in my handbag or my mini backpack when I'm uh, walking around in a city or a place. And this one is like done. This one is about Italy. I have a few pages left. So if I ever go back to Italy, I will continue my Italy journaling here. Um, but I can create one book per travel. And I think that's so cute because uh, one of these notebooks doesn't have too many pages. So you can easily fill up one of these notebooks per trip. Um, and I think that's such a good idea. So that's why I actually use the travel journal for travel journaling. I know a lot of people also use it for like um, planning and daily journaling, but I was like, I have a different system for my personal journal. So I do really use this for travel journaling and I just really, really love it, especially because you can switch out the inserts and use one insert per travel. So archiving will be very easy. If I wanna check out my Italy travels, I will just pull out my Italy travel insert and reread everything I did there. And I really love it. So I do highly recommend this as a travel journal. If you travel a lot, um, yeah, it's just awesome. And I think the leather and the way that this is like packaged gives me such a nostalgic feeling. Like you're like a really, like really like a world traveler. It's just so cute. I don't know, just it's a whole vibe and a mood. Two into one, baby. So definitely love this. Don't use this daily, but I do use this for every trip in combination with my Hobonichi Weeks for work and business. So moving on to something I haven't been using a lot because it's annoying, but I love it so much. It's my common place book and I love this baby so much, but what I don't like, wait, I have to rephrase that. I love common place booking, AKA archiving all these interesting facts, stories and quotes that I love. Um, but what I don't like is this cover and I don't like the flipping paper. So I got this on AliExpress. It was really cheap. It was my first, um, you know, ring binder experience. And I love ring binders because if you're like me, your brain works in a certain way, which means that if you, for example, have three pages with quotes, you don't want a page in between about seagulls, right? I want to categorize everything. I want to categorize things um, based on, I don't know, subject or color. So I want to have three pages uh, about animals in the animal section. I want to have quotes in the quote section. Hence why I like ring binders, because then you can just take out the pages and organize everything exactly the way you want. But since this is like a cheap, ring binder with paper from AliExpress and the grit is just off and it's just annoying. I uh, haven't been using it a lot, but as you can see, my last entry was in 2022, which is terrible because I have so many things I wanna share. So I have to start using this again because um, I really love commonplacing, as you can see. I would do this every week actually, but I've stopped because the paper is bothering me and this ring binder is annoying. So I decided to create my own ring binder and my own inserts. That's gonna take a while, but do I recommend common placing? Yes, as you can see, I used a lot already. If you're like me and your brain can hyper-focus on things, AKA lock in on a subject, wanting to know everything about it, write it down, and then when you know it, you're done, then common placing is amazing for you. Um, I've got things like movies in here, quotes, um, 
little pieces from magazines that I was reading that gave me like a great idea. So um, like, it's okay to feel lost sometimes. Fantastic quote, wanted to keep it, was in a magazine, stuck it in my commonplace book. So yeah, um, definitely highly recommend to have a commonplace book if there's a lot of things that you find interesting that you wanna remember, but you also wanna create some space in your brain because I think we know from psychology that if you try to remember everything, your brain gets overloaded. So if you just put it down on paper, you don't have to remind it all day, every day, and you can find it back whenever you want. But there's something about this system I don't like, which is it's not categorized. I don't like the paper and I don't like this ring binder. But do I recommend commonplace booking? Hell yeah. I just have to find a ring binder and paper and tabs that work for me. And as I said, I just decided that I'm gonna make them myself. So um, when I have the time, I will get back to commonplacing and do it my way with an organization system that I really like. So here we have my timeline journal and it's really simple. It is a journal in which I created a timeline. I don't really like this intro page, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, but a timeline journal for me is literally a timeline that branches out to all kinds of mini moments in my lifetime. Um, and then I put the date and I put a picture and a little excerpt. So for example, we went to the Efteling, which is a Dutch theme park, um, to the beach, and we went to Tokyo Taiyaki, which is like a Japanese store in The Hague, which sells taiyaki and other Japanese confectionery and pastries. And so I love having like a little picture, a small excerpt, and then the month and then the timeline keeps on going. But as you see, I stopped using this timeline journal that had everything to do with me feeling blue because I was keeping this up really well. Uh, and then I just stopped because I started feeling sad <laughs> and I wasn't really going anywhere. So there was no highlight to keep track of in my timeline journal, but things are happening and moving and shaking. I'm feeling better. So this one has to make a comeback. And so you'll probably have a timeline journal video to look out to or for because I'll be backtracking. I recommend a timeline journal if you're like me. So if you're the type of person who is like having trouble to be in the moment because you're always worried about what's gonna happen next, um, that's because my life has always been a little tumultuous. Um, and I'm always afraid something bad is gonna happen. It's getting less now, but it makes it really hard to be in the moment. So a timeline journal helps me to look back at cute little moments that I couldn't really feel in the moment because I was worried or stressed or anxious, but because it's in my journal, I can relive it and put a positive association to it. And it doesn't take much time. It's just a picture, a cute sticker, and a little excerpt, stick it down, draw your timeline onto the next, call it a day. And then when you feel blue or you just wanna reminisce and really uh, consciously relive what you've been through, you grab your timeline journal and you're like, oh my God, what did I do in August? Well, I went to the soju bar in Rotterdam with three friends. We had Bing Su and there was a pigeon on my balcony. <laughs> so yeah, um, a timeline journal is something I do really recommend. It hasn't been in my daily routine, but it will be back. It will be back. So yeah. By the way, this is an Archer and Olive journal. Flipping do not like this cover. I don't like the cloth. Ugh. I have a thing with textures. What I do like is this gold. Is that is it this what you call gilded pages? I do really like that. But I think Archer and Olive notebooks are overpriced. Sorry, not sorry. Um, yeah, they're overpriced. They're not. I don't think they're worth their money, but because I got these in one of those Friday mystery boxes that they had like a few years back, I am using it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've never bought an Archer and Olive, Archer and Olive notebook again because I don't like the cloth cover because texture issues and I think it's overpriced. Also, the paper is really white. <laughs> that sounds weird, but look, the paper is super white. If you compare it to a Hobonichi. I like more cream colored paper. So yeah, 
And then there's one more thing I want to show you, which I did not finish either. I started it and then because I got annoyed by this ring binder and AKA the paper, this was also an AliExpress buy. I started a media journal and I love that because I watch a lot of movies and shows. Um, and I really want to keep track of what I've been watching and reading. But um, again, I don't like that I can't categorize this. I don't like how the grit is annoying me. Um, but I do really like having a media journal. But I'm still looking for a better system. And like I said, I'm just going to make my own with paper and grits in a journal organizer planner thingy with a ring binder because that is what I like. So yeah, by the way, Move to Heaven, Korean show, highly recommend. If you need a good cry, it's amazing. Also, Mad Men, watched it four times. Love that show. Anyway, <laughs> we can put this aside because this is not in my daily routine, but it should be. But it's not because just like my commonplace journal, I don't like the system, but we're going to figure it out. All right, so I hope you liked watching my Techo Kaigi. I know it's probably a little longer than I planned, but hopefully it gave you some insight in how you can use all of these journals, notebooks, and planners. I hope it gave you some insight and ideas for your own Techo Kaigi setup. If it did, definitely let me know in the comments. If you have some tips for me, definitely share them. I'm a very minimalistic and let's get shit done type of planner journaler and notebook user so i always love seeing your tips in the comments they're always very helpful so thank you so much for sharing everything that you have shared so far and like i said definitely let me know if this video was helpful for you like subscribe thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one bye